Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, I'm gonna be revealing one of the saddest stories in the entire game. So if you'd like to experience this story for yourself, you're going to need to at least be in chapter three because you'll need to speak to a stranger in Rhodes that's going to trigger a mission called the Inquities of History. And it starts with this cutscene. Take a listen to this right here. What you want? You okay? <laughs> Do I look okay? <laughs> no. You look awful. Ugh. Awful. Look at me. Useless. I wasn't born to this. I didn't deserve this. I used to be a gentleman. Jeremiah Compson. Compson Stead. Good for you, if that's anything to boast about. They took everything from me. Who did? They. And what did they take? My whole life. A whole way of living, a career. I stole a lot of things, but that's quite a lot to steal. Look at me here, living in the shit and in the mud. I'm sorry. <laughs> my old house. The house my grandfather built. All dilapidated and destroyed, repossessed by the bank. I'm sorry to hear that. I was supposed to live a different life. Me too. If only I could get my old things back. Personal mementos, a watch, old pistol, my ledger. Where's this house again? Compson Stead. It's a north of... Scarlet Meadows. <laughs> Banks says I can't go near it. I'm living rough over by Aris Field. Well, if I'm ever out that way, I'll see what I can do. Time. Time is hell. So you meet this old man who looks to be drunk and hung over on the bench outside the Rhodes train station, Jeremiah Compson. And essentially, he tells you to go check out his old house that has been foreclosed on by the bank and they won't let him near. And essentially, he wants you to pick up three old items for him, a watch, a pistol, and a ledger. And throughout that entire conversation, he was giving you some like weird vibes that the government took his job away from him, and he used to be so well-respected, but now it's a different time. So you're kind of wondering, okay, what sort of job did he have? Well, all of that will be answered as we go along. So upon approaching the house for the first time, you're going to notice a bank levy on the door, and it says that the judge in the state of Lemoyne have seized this house, and the date is 1895. So it's been four years since this uh, judge has warranted uh, this levy on this house. So it's been quite a while since anyone has actually lived here. And if you go inside, you can start to find a lot of different things, uh, including letters and photographs that will give you a lot of the different backstory on who this character is. And every time you pick up a letter or an article or a document, it's usually associated with some sort of narration. And all of them end by saying the Ascension Plantation, which that's important. So keep that in mind right there. And a lot of these letters are dated a long time ago, like 1870, 1860, 20 or 30 years before the start of our game. And they all keep bringing up life on the plantation, all the great work that Jeremiah Compson has done. And once again, you have to find all of the items that he's looking for. So you can actually find the first antiqued pocket watch. It's on like the mantle above the fireplace. That's super easy to find. And then if you go into the next room, you can actually examine a photograph on top of the fireplace. And if it wasn't obvious enough, it sort of looks like there's a secret trap door in this house. But upon examining the photograph, Arthur will 100% confirm that there is a trap door, which will then trigger this cutscene. What you doing here? We found this place first. Yeah. Easy. Just looking around for some things. Hmm. That old revolver yours? <laughs> Finders keepers. Ah! Son of a bitch! Oh, God damn it. damn it! Come on, Dan! Where are you going? Come on! God damn you! Let me at you! <laughs> So 
So that was pretty easy to deal with the two squatters right there. From there, you have to pick up the antique pistol, which is really unfortunate because they won't actually let you keep the pistol. It is broken. It does not work. But how cool would that have been if you'd been able to keep that sort of rare, unique pistol in the game? That would have been awesome. You open up the trap door and immediately you start to notice something very dark and creepy. Uh, there's like shackles on the wall with like big chains. It's in this dark basement underneath a trap door. You almost think that they were keeping people prisoner here. And that is kind of creepy. You can also pick up Jeremiah Compson's diary, which is different to the ledger. And essentially what this reveals is that he is a slave trader. Yikes. How creepy is that? So this basement right here is where he was keeping slaves. And now that all starts to make sense. The plantation, the fact that he was once a well-respected worker, but they took his job away, obviously because slavery was eventually outlawed. And Arthur even reacts really horribly to that. He's like, geez. And then you can actually pick up the ledger. And this ledger is a list of slaves that he had been selling. You can see the dates, the names, and the amount of money. How creepy is that? So it turns out that this sad old man, Jeremiah Compson, was a freaking slave trader. This guy is the worst of the worst. Now, once you've acquired all three of the items, you're gonna need to return to him, but I noticed this well, and I wanted to go down inside, and I noticed something creepy. There are actually like tally marks on the inside of the well. Like someone was trapped down here for a certain number of time. And you can see like there's rows upon rows of these tally marks, which again indicates that someone might have been stuck down here for days, if not months. Now, I don't know if that's connected to this story in any way, but that is pretty creepy. Now, from there, you're supposed to return all the items to Jeremiah, which once again will trigger a cutscene where you can have this interaction with him. Oh, man. Oh, man. You sh show some respect. I was respected once. I had a profession. You asked me to get you something. There's no bringing back what I want. I want my job, my pride, the respect accorded to a gentleman. What about this old crap? Huh? My things. Don't you understand? Those bastards have changed everything. I was a good worker. I took pride in my work. They, they, they took it away. Pissed on my legacy. Oh, man. Some jobs ain't for saving. And some legacies? Oh, they are for Ooh, pissing What off. are you doing? That's, that's my history. <laughs> ah, God. Damn you. Damn you. I still exist. <laughs> so Arthur does the right thing, in my opinion, by burning all of his belongings. And what's actually kind of interesting is you can have the option to kill him after that. And if you do so, you will get a lot of good honor points. And what's funny is this guy flopped face first right onto the fire, and his body was engulfed in flames. So I did not feel bad about killing this old man at all. He is the worst of the worst and just a slave trader. That's absolutely terrible. Now, a couple of days ago, I was working on a video that had to do with an interaction you had at Catfish Jackson, and I actually noticed that there was a X on the map, which usually indicates that there is a dead body somewhere around. And I wouldn't have known this was here unless I was working on that Catfish Jackson video. So where I found this is on the very southern portion of the map. And it's on the edge of the water too. And it looks like it's this body uh, that has been here for quite some time. And from the looks of it, it looks like this person was once either a prisoner or was restrained by some like shackles. In my opinion, this looks to have been a slave that potentially escaped. Did they escape from Jeremiah Compson? That's what we're gonna be finding out. So you actually have the option to loot the stranger. And if you do that, you'll actually get a letter to Uncle Lewis from Elijah. And it reads this, 
September 6th, 1861, which is a long time ago, like 38 years ago. Dear Uncle Lewis, I will keep this brief because I am on the run once again. After escaping the switch and whip of the Pennington family, I was captured by a white man outside the town of Rhodes and have spent the last three months or so in the worst conditions of my life. He took me to a shack called Old Harry Fen in southern Lemoyne, where I was chained to a wall night and day in a filthy room with only the barest minimal of sustenance. I ain't sure if he is a slave catcher by trade or just plain evil or both, but if I hadn't escaped my shackles, I doubt I would have survived much longer. Now I intend to make my way as safely as possible up to Canada to join you and cousin Samuel. I imagine it will take me a few weeks, but I am determined to remain free and I am very much looking forward to continue my schooling with you. I intend to stow away on a train heading north and will post this letter when I reach the next town. Best, Elijah. So that's interesting. We get a date there, which was 1861, which would have been 38 years ago. We know that this was Elijah, was once captured by the Pennington family, was taken to a small cabin called Old Harry Finn. So I don't think that Elijah here is connected in any way to Jeremiah Compson. But this did give me another mystery that I wanted to check out. Where was this shack, Old Harry Finn? And is that where Elijah was from? Now, we don't know the cause of death of Elijah here. It doesn't look like he has any bullet wounds or anything along those lines. Maybe he died from dehydration or starvation or exhaustion, or maybe he tripped and fell. We have no idea. But it is pretty easy to find the shack. It's actually located not too far away. Again, it's called Old Harry Finn. It is super like decrepit and worn down. And the second you enter, you can see this room on the left hand side that is just horrifying. It's got the shackles, it's got, you know, chains and everything like that. It just looks terrible. And you can actually inspect the floorboard where you will find a family photograph. And this is what the photograph looks like. I'm not sure if that was Elijah or if that was someone who lived here earlier. It looks like this is the family who used to live here as I'm pretty sure the background is like the shack, Old Harry Finn, uh, as you guys can see here. Now, upon exploring the rest of the house, there is some things we can find. We can actually find a newspaper scrap that's sort of interesting. It says, slave catcher newspaper scrap, $200 reward. Ran away from the subscriber on the night of August 17th. A man who calls himself Curtis Royal. He is stoutly made, about 27 years of age, and 5 feet 9 inches in height. He wears his hair combed, and upon his body are several old marks of the whip. His countenance is rather sullen, and when spoken to, he answers quickly. I will give a reward of $200 for the apprehension and return of said boy to Rhodes Jail or my property at Shady Bell, Scarlet Meadow in the state of Lemoyne, Joseph Charlesworth, April 28th, 1859. So again, that is 40 years ago uh, since we take place in 1899. And so far, even though what we've seen has not been related to Jeremiah Compson, this is definitely one of the saddest stories in the game. It looks as if we found the runaway slave from this shack, Old Harry Fenn, and we also saw how prevalent this was in the state of Lemoyne, not only with this instance right here, but Jeremiah Compson, uh, and probably much more that aren't documented in uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. But anyways, that's why this is one of the saddest stories in the game that you can actually uncover by speaking to Jeremiah Compson going in that secret trap door. Uh, it's pretty crazy. So as always, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this story and more. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.